Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast Supplemental Edition. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, a new knife from a new company, Newfoundland Knife Company. Uh, a new knife comes out from GEC that I know a lot of people are going to be swarming around. And then we're going to talk about EDC knives, uh, this one in particular for warm weather. Uh, it, this was a suggestion by one of our new patrons, Ryan Gilman, and uh, well, sort of a take on a suggestion. We're going to dig deeper into his suggestion uh, sometime in the future. He wants to talk about specific carry weights for different uh, times of year for different EDC knives. But that sparked my uh, curiosity. What do I have in my collection currently that I can take a look at that's a great EDC as, as the weather gets warmer? But before we get to any of that, it's my opportunity, first opportunity, to show off my knives. And today we're going to talk uh, pocket check. We're going to talk Emerson. Uh, this morning I was awakened early and uh, surprised, and I had to run out the door to take care of something. And what did I grab? What what was my first instinct? What did I grab? It was an Emerson, because uh, you never know what life's going to throw you when you're awakened early in the morning. And uh, I grabbed the Emerson Tiger. This is my most recent Emerson acquisition, and it is, I love this knife. This was one of the few knives I brought on my most recent road trip down to Florida, and it uh, was in my pocket most of the time. This is one of those knives that just makes you feel like you've got it covered, period. Not only is it extremely capable, uh, it's got a nearly four inch clip point blade. Uh, the blade looks a lot like the 630, the ZT 630, or it may be a fatter version of the CQC8. And then it's got this amazingly ergonomic handle, a lot of people's favorite handle by Emerson. You know, so uh, among an extremely ergonomic group of knives and knife handles, this is probably the most uh, ergonomically, I don't know, sound and encapsulating handle. So this is this this is uh, way up there for favorite Emerson's. Grabbed this this morning, ran out the door with it. And so this is what I'm carrying all day long. Made me feel confident and secure, just like the commercial says. But that's a commercial for something very different than an Emerson knife. So uh, this was the Tiger. Uh, not for nothing, but when he uh, created this, Ernest Emerson designed and made the first batch of those. Uh, that was his EDC for a couple of years there, uh, carrying that. Uh, second EDC is the, well, it's the concept Pelican, and wouldn't you know, I left that on the kitchen table. I'm sitting here like I'm um, uh, totally, totally baffled as to how I did that. But um, let me just assure you, <laughs> it's a cool knife, great knife. Um, but since I'm not carrying that and I don't have that around, I am going to show you something that uh, I guess we'll do this as a little update on the fly. Sorry about that, Jim. But uh, I have been, uh, even though I complained about it quite a bit in my review video, I have been carrying and using the Chris way more than I expected, the Chris highlight here. So I just want to show it off. I'll get it in front of the camera here uh, and and congratulate them on this incredible OS 10 blade and the execution of the, of the edge of this curvy serpentine blade uh, is really, they did a magnificent job of getting an even grind the whole way. And uh, I am finding, you know, even though I have found some serious shortcomings in the handle uh, in terms of finish and fit, actually, um, this blade really makes up for it in spades. I do plan on uh, redoing the handle, uh, but what I'm really finding is very utilitarian is the fact that this last curve here at the end, it terminates in a downward hook, and this makes for a great paper cutter. And uh, believe it or not, I do quite a bit of uh, cutting paper here, not just to test the edges I put on knives, but to get, I'm, I'm very particular about how pages rip out of my notebooks and my notepads. And it seems like no one can get perforations right these days. What's going on with you people? So uh, I end up using this at the top of the page to get, get a clean cut out of my, uh, out of my notepads. So there you go. That, I really am carrying the, the concept Pelican, except I just used it and left it where I was. So you'll have to excuse the faux pas. 
So today it is the Emerson Tiger, such a fantastic knife, and uh, the concept, concept pelican. Uh, so last uh, weekend, it uh, well actually today is the anniversary. My my wife and my anniversary, fourteen years. Love you, baby. She's not listening, but still love you, baby. And uh, so this past weekend we went out for an escape room and dinner. We've kind of always talked about going to an escape room, never got around to it. This time we decided why not? And we went uh, to this great place in uh, Old Town Alexandria and um, we had an hour to get out of this room and do all the clues. The Basically it was uh, you're in the king's chamber, the king's been kidnapped and if you don't find the gold, he's going to get beheaded. And well, sorry king, I I'm sure you were a bastard anyway. And probably deserved it, but we did not succeed. I, we were shocked. You know, my wife is a private investigator. She's she's a researcher by nature and by trade, and she knows, you know, she can put two and two together. And this was absurdly oblique and difficult. And uh, well, we had some stuff to talk about over dinner about how how inferior that escape room was, how superior our, our intellect was, and how it wasn't truly engaged by this escape room. It was a little bit of shame. I got to say, we were both thinking uh, we'd have extra time, you know, and we, <laughs> the clues were so ridiculous. But anyway, after that, we went out to dinner. We went to a great uh, Southern, uh, what do you call it? Southern cuisine restaurant, you know, lots of fried chicken and, and grits and shrimp. And oh man, it was delicious. I got chicken and waffles. Second time I've ever gotten it in my life. And, uh, Forgot how much I loved it the first time. But, you know, I can't just walk into a restaurant, especially a nice one, and use that nasty blade, they, that nasty, wet-handled, dull saw blade they hand you for a steak knife. So I had to bring this with me. My GEC number 65 Ben Hogan. Clip point, beautiful clip point blade. And then, of course, this gorgeous... Um, faux tortoise shell. I guess you have to say it's faux tortoise shell because they don't really use real tortoise shell if they ever did in the first place. Uh, this is from 2014 and, uh, or I'm sorry, 2015. And it has the beautiful, I love that cloud shield. This is my, one of my few steak knives that I bring with me whenever we go out to dinner. I just refuse, je refuse to use a, um, you know, a steak knife that, that is supplied or any knife that's supplied. Even I didn't have steak last night, but this, this cut through that chicken and waffles, like you wouldn't believe. Um, it's got a uh, food patina on it. This is a 1095 blade and that patina is not forced though. It is not, um, has not been thwarted either. Every time I, I use the knife, I just sort of dunk it in my glass of water and wipe it down, put it back in my pocket, much to my wife's dismay. She's like, do you have to do that? Something about that is just, ah, it's kind of gauche, uh, but I do it anyway. Uh, I love that patina because it's, it's earned. It's a real true patina from real work. And um, this is one of my favorite knives. There's a great video about this knife and the history. L listen to that walk and talk. Um, there's a great video on the history of this knife by Rob Bixby, the Apostle P, and he goes through uh, several models of this knife and their interesting history. None of it I remember because I saw it in 2015, and that was six years ago. How am I supposed to remember that? But uh, interesting video nonetheless. So this was my steak knife last night for the anniversary dinner. Um, 14 years, uh, 14 short years. You know, there are moments that seem long. It's like anything else. But when I look at it in the aggregate, it's been like a, a, blink of, a blink of an eye. So just had to share with you. That's what I was cutting my chicken and waffles with. What do you think of chicken and waffles? Let us know on the listener line, 724-466-4487. Uh, do you bring a knife when you go out to dinner? Um, do you want to not use what they supply you? Do you, do you not want to waste an opportunity to bring one of your knives and cut the delicious food you're paying too much for uh, with that? Let me know. Call the listener line. Let us know. 724-466-4487. Now, uh, as you know, I'm sure you're aware of the date. This weekend, this coming weekend, is Blade Show in Atlanta. And it will be our first 
presence at Blade Show, the Knife Junkie podcast. And unfortunately, I am going alone next year. I have it on good word. Uh, Jim will be joining us. Me, us. I, my pronouns are still me. So uh, we're going to be going down there. I'm going to be going down there. And uh, Jim will be holding down the fort back at home. And we're going to be creating content while we're there. Uh, I'll be doing uh, little little videos and posting them on Instagram and YouTube. And then we're going to do a composite podcast uh, with a couple of close-up interviews, you know, a, a couple of uh, catching up with some of the makers we've already spoken with and maybe with some new people. And we're going to put a podcast up of that the following or that Sunday. So look for some Blade content coming from our Knife Junkie channel here. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm, I'm, I'm a late pecker. Let me put it that way. When we go on a trip, it's like the morning of or the night before I pack. But for this, I want to make sure I don't forget anything because I'm bringing down some, um, you know, extra stuff. And I just want to make sure. So I'm, I'm getting very excited. I'm packing my stuff, you know, thinking about what knives I'm going to bring. And uh, I guess I should look at the knife laws in Georgia. Um, but I mean, we're going to a knife show. My gosh. I don't know. I don't know how... Uh, how stringent I need to be. But anyway, I guess it never hurts to check out the knife laws in the states you're traveling to. And of course, you can do that on knife rights. And uh, not for nothing, but I just realized uh, that um, their Ultimate Steel fundraiser is beginning or about to begin. I just got an email uh, mentioning the Ultimate Steel. That's their annual um, uh, fundraising uh, drive. And you always get great prizes. So please look for that. Knife Rights has really, really, really helped us in the knife community out, changing antiquated laws through, you know, almost 30 states so far. And, uh, you know, so they are well worth your investment and also well worth uh, subscribing to because you get all sorts of news about uh, the different knife laws and such. Now, before we head over to Knife Life News, I got to show you something that Jim just came up with so cool. Uh, you, as you know, we have t-shirts with the, with this logo, and then we have some t-shirts that, uh, it, not just t-shirts, all sorts of merch, uh, that, um, we've created. And Jim came up with some, some great, uh, logos. He did a, uh, um, uh, a t-shirt that has the, um, uh, don't shake, don't take, uh, don't take dull for an answer logo on there and some other, uh, um, great t-shirts, but he just came up with a new one. And this is probably my favorite so far. Knife math, two equals one and one equals none. You know, you know the rule. You can't just carry one knife. And uh, if you're like me, your math is not as sharp as it once was, and it was never sharp in my case. Um, so I, I could use some serrations on my knife math. And this is, uh, this is exactly what that is. This is the kind of math I understand. Two equals one and one equals none. And uh, you see that I in knife is a really beautiful, big recurve blade. So check this stuff out uh, on, the, uh, on the website. Just go to the knifejunkie.com slash shop and you'll be able to find all of your knife junkie merch needs, which I'm sure are legion. But definitely check out this new one. I'm going to get a couple of these uh, to have around. Uh, for giveaways and also for myself to wear and uh, I'll give them to friends and such. Uh, but I also, I need to expand my merch out a little bit and start getting coffee cups because I'm always, always drinking coffee. This is a good one. Don't tread on me or my knives, but uh, some knife math just to remind me as I'm taking a sip. Uh, I think that's the way to go. Uh, please, since we're here and we're talking about this kind of thing, help us out on Patreon. Show your support. Uh, you can get Knife Junkie stickers, a mention on the podcast, early access to the Sunday interviews and midweek supplemental shows, a monthly knife giveaway. That's probably our most popular feature. And we're cooking up some new and exciting exclusive opportunities. Your support really helps us keep this show going, um, especially with infrastructure and such. So check us out on Patreon and see what helping us can get you. The quickest way to get there is by going to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Lots of knife in that last uh, 
interstitial. I love it. Just just say it as much as you can. So coming up is uh, a new GEC. That's the number 83, and it's a lockback, and they have not made this lockback since 2015, and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I don't know if I'll get it. I got to be honest. Uh, I don't go to a Great Eastern Cutlery for locking knives. I'm just going to be totally honest with you, but I love the look of this sucker. Uh, this is the Tascosa. Rolls right off the tongue. The number 83 Tascosa. And it is a 1095 uh, blade, which I really like because uh, recently they've been doing a lot of their locking knives in 440C, which is just fine. It's a fine steel, but again, I don't go to, there are certain things I go to GEC for. One of them is uh, slip joint action. And the other is, uh, I love their 1095. Like I just showed you on that number 65. I love how it patinas. I love how it sharpens. It sharpens very easily, holds a great edge, and it's tougher. You know, it's not going to chip on you uh, as quickly or easily. All that being said, I don't hard use hard use my slip joints at all, so toughness really hasn't come into play for me much. Uh, but here in the number 83 Tascosa, with this Bocote wood, it looks beautiful, and I love that sort of traditional shield. It's like a coat of arms shield. Um, and then you have that flared out pommel. Uh, side there, kind of similar to the uh, 71, or I'm sorry, yeah, the 71 bull nose. And when you do that, it leaves a little bit of extra room uh, for a lanyard hole. I love slip joints or traditional style knives with lanyard holes because sometimes I don't want to put it in a leather, uh, one of these leather things and slip it in my pocket. Sometimes I just want it in my pocket. And when you have a little leather fob on the end, uh, I find leather works best. When you have one of those uh, and you put it in your pocket, front pocket, it, it tends to stay oriented north to south better. Something about having that little leather fob keeps it upright, you know, grips onto the inside of your pocket a little bit. Whereas uh, without it, it can be quite slippery and frequently falls sideways like this. And that drives me nuts. Also, it's great for back pocket carry. Uh, you can stick it in your back pocket, maybe next to your wallet. So the wallet helps keep it north to south. And then also the little fob helps you grab it, but also does the same thing it does in the front pocket. Kind of gives it a little extra tension, a little extra friction to keep it from moving around. So that's another feature of this Tascosa that's really interesting to me. Now, if anyone has a GEC lockback, you can let me know. Uh, I've read here and there that they they might come with a little bit of play. And, you know, that's not the end of the world, especially considering they're using 100-year-old techniques on 100-year-old machines to make these knives. You might not get the same sort of space-age tolerances that you get out of some of the newer style construction and uh, methods of construction. Uh, so that is not a deal breaker for me on this kind of a knife, but I'm just curious uh, if anyone has a lockback a GEC, do you experience blade play? Um, to me, uh, left to right is more acceptable than up and down. I don't like up and down play at all in anything because to me, it seems like, mm, I don't know, like it might just get you in trouble. But uh, anyway, let me know. I'd be interested to find out. So that is the new GEC 83 lockback. It's coming in uh, that Bacote wood and then uh, it's coming in something else. Uh, let me see if I can. Well, it's coming in uh, the Tidiute trim and the uh, unexcelled trim. Uh, well, I can't find it right now, and I'm not going to sit here and read this whole article. Uh, but it is coming in two different uh, two different covers. Oh, stag. The other is stag. I don't have any stag. I need more stag in my life, but I do have it on good word that the knife that's being made for me for my birthday. Uh, that's coming up is uh, going to have a stag handle. I'm very excited. Also, something we're going to start talking about soon is Jim and my birthday bash. Uh, this I should have mentioned in our opening section, but we both have August birthdays, and we're going to do something big this year. Um, so we're still cooking it up, but but stay tuned for that. Um, okay, so coming up next, we have, uh, we're have we going to look at the state of the collection, a couple of new knives, one uh, two bequeathed by our good friend Dave over at uh, this old sword blade reviews, and then one that's on loan to me from a new knife company. But first, 
help support the show. I already asked you to do that. Uh, but uh, before we dig into that, like, comment, subscribe, and you know, hit the notification bell. And, and please share the videos if you can. If you know anyone who'd be interested, share the videos. That really helps because we're trying to get ourselves up to 5,000 subs on YouTube. And the more new people who see uh, the show and might like it, might like the content, or might might like the knives we show here, uh, the more people are likely to subscribe and the more the word gets out. So uh, definitely share these videos and join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. It has been great. They get better and better. There are Thursday weekly live stream right here on YouTube, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we have people join in. Uh, we, we've had a couple of new guests recently. They're not guests. They're viewers like you who just go to the knifejunkie.com slash join, turn on the camera on their phone, put a little light on their face and boom. They're on the show with us and they can show us knives and they're not, you know, they can join the conversation and it's no commitment. You could dip in for three minutes, say, hey, what's up? This is what I'm carrying and go. Or you could stay all night and chat and just, uh, you know, join the, the, the sewing circle here. So join us for Thursday Night Knives tomorrow night right here on YouTube. That's Thursday Night Knives tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. A gentleman reached out to me on Instagram recently. Uh, Jonathan Styles is his name. Cool name. Uh, but he has a company up in Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Yes, you know Newfoundland. It was the first part of the United States. Or not the United States. I'm sorry. The first part of North America uh, that was found by the Europeans. At least uh, so the story goes when the Vikings uh, kind of washed up on shore there. And uh, Newfoundland is a rugged uh Canadian area. I knew a, a guy in uh, in school from Newfoundland, and he was a, an, an amazing blend of absolutely brilliant and intelligent, and then uh, uh, a third totally crazy, and then a third just rugged individualist. He left a great impression on me uh, for Newfoundland. Uh, and so when this gentleman, Jonathan Stiles, reached out to me from the Newfoundland Knife Company, and asked if I wanted to check out a knife he just created, I jumped on it. And um, this is it. This is called the Newfoundland Knife Ranger. It's a ranger knife uh, made for um, the rangers up there. Now, I'm not actually sure if they're military rangers or, or, um, or just, I I'm not sure what, but this is a knife that he designed and had made by Millet Knife Company, uh, the magnificent OEM and, uh, uh, what knife company up in uh, in Idaho, and here it is. This is a um, red Cerakoted version. It comes in black and also uh, like a you know silver, like regular untreated blade. Uh, this is a really nice outdoors knife. Now let's let's look at it stem to stern here, starting with the blade. It's eighth inch thick D two. And as you can see, it's about two inches broad. And with this uh, inch and a half high or inch and a quarter high saber grind here, it comes to an incredibly thin edge here, really thin. Uh, it's D2 steel. And like I said, Cerakoted. And I'm going to correct myself. I, it does not come in an untreated blade. This is D2. It's this red and then black with a couple of different handles. The handles are beautifully contoured coke bottle shaped wood here and uh, you know treated impregnated with epoxy style wood and it's just feels like a dream in hand it's really really ergonomically uh really nice and it's got this thumb ramp here and you can come in front of the thumb ramp actually my thumbs are not my hands are not big enough to to make it work by coming up front but i i feel like someone with slightly larger hands uh, would definitely be able to come up in front of this thumb ramp 
and make it work. I love when you can when you can get uh, in front of the thumb ramp with your thumb. And uh, in this case, uh, I can't, but not comfortably. I, I think someone else could for sure, though. Some cool uh, uh, aspects to this. I love the thinness. Now, we were talking about this last week on Thursday Night Knives. I brought this out, and it, it got a really great reception. People seem to really like not only the look of this knife, but a number of people responded on how they love the thinness of the blade stock. I, I presented a little trepidation about it. I was like, I don't know, this is an outdoor survival style, uh, you know, tactical-esque kind of knife. And uh, I was like, is eighth inch too thin? And people were, I kind of got a resounding no. Uh, you want the thinness for all the sort of carving and and uh, that ca kind of capability you want uh, everything, but really uh, um, batoning. You could definitely baton this through wood, but it doesn't have that thick wedge-like effect. But a you probably don't really need that if you need to baton uh, wood to make kindling. You don't need that wedge thing. It just the wedge shape makes it quicker and easier. But most people seem to think that for a knife that is going to do what it's supposed to do, which is cut, thin is good. Also, I got a number of comments on how uh, we forget how resilient steel is, especially with a good heat treat. And then knowing that this is made by Millet, uh, who, you know, a company that was formed by uh, someone who left uh, Chris Reeve Knives, someone who obviously knows what they're doing uh, with knife making, you know that their heat treat is going to be solid on this D2 steel. So um, very interesting. I like that it's not ham fisted, so to speak. It's not super thick there. It feels really great in hand. And actually, you know, uh, I had to do some of my some of my movements and techniques with it. Uh, I was just if you're only listening, I was waving it around kind of looking like a fool, uh, but doing some of my collie sort of stuff with it. And it moves great in hand. So if you needed this uh, if you needed this to be a light and facile knife, uh, it would be great for that too. Uh, some interesting things here. It's got a lanyard hole, but only one. And it's forward of the grip here, right on this um, little finger guard area. And I have to say, I do like forward, cho um, excuse me, forward lanyard holes like this. However, I like them in concert with rear lanyard holes. So it seems like this should should maybe on the next iteration, he might think about putting a rear lanyard hole. I do like when you can take a lanyard and, and string it through the back and the front and create something that comes over your hand, uh, kind of like a D guard in a, <clears throat> in, on a saber or something like that, but not to protect your knuckles for when you're in a fight uh, or anything like that. But it can be very handy to have a knife in hand and have it strapped to your hand so that you can kind of let go with your fingers and, and manipulate and do things with your fingers, but still have the knife kind of attached to your hand. Say the lanyard comes across maybe just behind your knuckles. Um, I think that's a, that's a very useful feature in a sort of outdoor survival type knife. Um, obviously not a necessary and not a deal breaker not to have that back uh, lanyard loop, uh, lanyard hole, but uh, just would make this one up forward make more sense to me. Other than that, that's kind of my only one real criticism of this blade, and it's not really even a criticism. It's just a suggestion. Um, <clears throat> I do like the way, <clears throat> excuse me, I do like the way you can remove the handles with these uh, with these Corby bolts here, and uh, if you get anything under there, uh, blood, viscera, oil, water, anything, you could remove this and clean it down and put it back on. It also allows you to make other handle scales. Say you like my car to better, or you like to swap handle scales out. Um, you can do that with this too. A uh, very interesting knife. Also, it comes with this extremely stout leather sheath here. It's sort of half, um, what do you call it? Uh, Hmm. I can't remember what you call this kind of sheath, uh, but it's it's sort of half and half. It's got the it's got the uh, retention strap here, but it's also kind of the kind of sheath you can just drop the knife into. Uh, it's not too form fitting. Damn it! What's that called? 
Uh, I'm sure you can let me know in the comments below. Uh, but I have seen on um, Jonathan's Instagram feed, which uh, incidentally is Newfoundland Knife Company, um, he has been working on making uh, Kydex sheaths for these knives. And uh, who doesn't love a Kydex sheath, especially if you're out in the wilderness and you know, for extended periods of time, you might want something that that uh, doesn't, you know, won't be um, compromised by weather and and moisture and that kind of thing. So a really, really nice first outing by uh, Newfoundland Knife Company. They also make some other outdoor survival and camping kind of gear. Uh, so check them out for sure. And if you like the design and uh, you like the way it looks and thinks you might like how it feels, you should go for it because they're made by Millet. And Millet has an extremely amazing reputation uh, for making really excellent knives. So Newfoundland Knife Company. Thank you, Jonathan, for loaning this to me. I do appreciate it. I'm going to do a close-up video of this, and then I will get it back to you. Next in the state of the collection, two knives bequeathed to the station, uh, the station to the channel by uh, our good friend Dave, This Old Sword Blade Reviews. Um, first is from a company I have never experienced. I've only kind of seen them on uh, YouTube, and that's Harns. Uh, it's hard for me to even say Harns. Uh, it, this is a Chinese company, and I am so impressed. I got to say, I mean, this is a $40 knife uh, on um, uh, on on the YouTubes. I mean, on the, the internet, uh, $40 knife here, and it's got probably the best action of any knife that I've experienced. I, I, I'm, I'm loath to say that because I have a bunch of really expensive knives uh, that have really excellent action and this beats them all. Uh, of course, knives aren't just about how they open and close. It's, it's how they um, perform when you use them. So uh, I haven't really used this. I plan on uh, making this a giveaway knife. Um, but this Harns knife, I cannot believe. I mean, you got to get your thumb out of the way. This, uh, look at it. You see that? It just caught my my thumb. The uh, the bearing action on this is just too smooth. It's ridiculously smooth, um, which is to say it's awesome. This is called the Harvest. It's got G10. You can get it in a number of different colors. A G10 handle with this, with this nice sort of decorative milling. Uh, a blue anodized aluminum pivot collar, which is a nice touch. Uh, the pivot itself has that stylized H standing for Harns. Uh, and then you've got a uh, loop over pocket clip that goes on either side. You've got a G10 backspacer and, or that might be, no, no, that is G10. That's a G10 backspacer. You can tell by the, uh, the patterning and uh, a great blade. The blade reminds me a bit, just a bit of the uh, 940. If the 940 had a, a bit more belly, it might look a bit like this. Um, the point is right center line. If you look, if you look down the barrel of it here, let, let's switch to this camera for a second. If you look at it like this, right down the line, you'll see the point is perfectly aligned with the pivot and the um, lanyard hole. So you get the sort of semi um, worn cliffy effect, uh, but it's also placing that point right in the middle. So it's, it, you'll know exactly where that point is for, um, you know, penetrating, you know, thrusting into packages or whatever. Um, I, I really like the placement. I like the way the blade shape works with the handle. Um, one thing I don't like about this knife is this large choil. I, you know, I, I mention it all the time. Uh, there's some really, really excellent knives with these large kind of choils. Uh, uh, the Contigo is one of them, you know, uh, by Benchmade. Such an, an amazing knife, but that the large choils kind of baffle me a little bit because it doesn't quite fit two fingers, and I don't have giant fingers. I mean, it does if you really cram them up there, and and it's too big for one finger. So it it, it kind of I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what is intended by this kind of large scoop, but uh, it's there and it's comfortable in some positions and then you're you notice it in other positions like it's great in a hammer grip like this you're doing really hard work with it carving you don't notice it if 
But when you, if you bring it out more like this in a saber grip, which you're probably not going to be using too much anyway, you start to feel that, that partition right in the middle of your finger there. Feels actually quite good in a reverse grip because the, the pinky is smaller, the ring finger is smaller, and they both fit nicely into that extra large choil there. But on the whole, I got to say, that's one thing about this knife that uh, is, a, is a little turn off. But that's a personal taste issue. Um, there, are, there are a number of really great knives that have that, um, that doesn't seem to bother other people. So, so I'm very happy about this Harns knife. I'd like to check out uh, some of their other stuff. This action, the fit and finish, the build is outstanding. And this is a 14C28N. I understand they use a lot of different blade steels, at least if you look at the pamphlet that it, it ships with. Uh, they use everything from 440C up to M390. This is kind of squarely in the middle with uh, 14C28N, the Swedish Sandvik steel. You'll notice that this has a finger choil on the blade. That choil is great. Uh, and, and I'm mentioning that because the next knife has a, a bit of a misstep with its choil. But this one is excellent. I think this is actually my preferred way to hold this knife is with my finger in the blade choil and then these two fingers in that large choil. This is a, is a pretty comfortable way of holding it. This I think is a work all day kind of knife. And uh, yeah, thank you, Dave, so much for sending this our way. Uh, I'm really happy to have experienced a, a Harns knife now and uh, they have some other really cool looking designs. So and check them out in the future. Next is a real, no, I do this every time. Next one is a steel will knife. Um, steel will and real steel always, always get me uh, wrapped around the axle. So here, this is called the Arcticus, Arcturus, I'm sorry, the Arcturus. And it's a very stylized looking clip point. Look at this thing. It's pretty beautiful. I, I do like this design quite a bit. Uh, the blade is D2 and it's all belly. Look at that from from the from the tip to the um, to the ricasso here. It's all this nice gradual belly. It is pretty broad and almost a full height grind, flat grind. It's very thin behind the edge and extremely slicey, but also very pointy. Look at that point. It's got a nice penetrating tip there with the full width of the blade. There's no swedge there. So that fine, fine tip is backed up by quite quite a bit of meat there. Or, well, let's just say steel, quite a bit of steel there. So uh, I think it's gonna be a point that even I would have difficulty breaking. And uh, I, I, do, I do like that. And I love the blade shape. It allows for, you see this swale here, right up uh, before the clip. You can really put your thumb up there and, and push down uh, for hard work if you're working hard with this knife. One thing you might want to do if you had your thumb way up there is put your finger right in that uh, choil there. But that choil is weirdly, weirdly large and weirdly small. So I'm talking about a blade choil in front of the flipper there. Um, as you can see, it's a it makes for a large sharpening choil. But with the forward uh, sort of protrusion of the G10, uh, it sort of almost gets in the way. Um, anyway, it's it's temptingly large. You kind of want to put your finger there, but it's not, it's not big enough to put a finger in. So just an interesting design flourish and actually kind of looks good. And you know me, I love how things look. And uh, that is an important thing to me. Uh, this one um, where the Harns, maybe that choil was not as ergonomic as I'd like it to be. This one is very, very comfortable uh, in this saber grip. Um, you've got this kind of extreme tapering at the butt end, which lets you really squeeze hard down on the on the end. Also, it shores you up if you're thrusting because uh, it nestles so nicely into the fat of your palm there. And it gives you a nice big area here for all your fingers to go. And then of course, you've got that little partition and an area for your forefinger. It's got really nice flipping action, but it closes very, mm, we use the term hydraulic sometimes. 
this this knife is on bearing uh, not on bearings it's on uh, um washers and this is a knife that will take a little breaking in it's funny in this day of instantly broken in knives um, especially like this harns which just falls and ch wants to chop your thumb off we're not used to knives that break in anymore and this much like the um cut jack that i had flips out beautifully and then requires some pressure to close. Now with the cut jack that I had, that went away. Um, the longer and longer I had it, the more and more I flipped it, the more it became kind of drop shutty, if you will. So uh, I have a feeling that's going to happen with this one also. Um, but just a great knife and D2 steel, uh, three and three quarters inches. Uh, so it's got a nice length. It's a nice size, full size knife for sure. And just a weird name, Arcturus. I'm sure that means something. Uh, it's got the skeletonized clip here. I like it. It's not deep carry, but you don't need it to be. I, I don't anyway, because only a tiny little bit of this, uh, tiny little bit of the pommel comes out of the handle. The back side or the left side is tapped for um, for the clip if you switch it but uh, it looks like you just need to pop out a little bit of the plastic. Now there's one little thing I want to talk about here and that is it seems like the action on this knife has to be uh, you know I was talking about the break in here. One thing about this construction I, I don't like or I think maybe um, knives that have this okay look I'll just get to it. You see, there's a screw here and a screw here, a body screw here and a body screw here, and two standoffs. And by the way, there's a place to put your lanyard if you want to. Uh, but you've got two standoffs, and that's it. Two standoffs at the tail end, and then everything else is on the pivot. That puts a lot of pressure on the pivot uh, to um, hold the knife together. I do like it when a knife has maybe one more body screw right up here with another standoff or whatever, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's a backspacer or something, but I like the screws that hold the thing together beside the pivot to come up a little bit further so that you don't have to have so much um, responsibility of holding the knife together on the pivot so that maybe you can loosen the pivot and it won't uh, change the centering or won't change the stoutness of lockup. Like here, this this is there's no blade play in this at all. Um, but if you were to loosen this pivot to get a um, easier action on closing, not that it's difficult. I mean, just to be honest, it's not difficult. But if you were to do that, you wouldn't be able to because you don't have a screw right back here to help hold the thing together. So that is not a real dig on this knife. It's a it's a dig on knives in general that that are minimal in the body screws. I prefer a couple more standoffs or maybe a, a, a backspacer so that it takes some of the pressure off the pivot. Just a note, and uh, well, I'm very, very happy with these two knives uh, that Dave sent. Thank you, Dave. Look at that. So go check out uh, This Old Sword Blade Reviews on YouTube and on Instagram. He's got awesome taste. I love his knives. Uh, he and I have uh, very, very parallel tastes. And uh, he has been around the martial arts game, the Kali game, for a long time. So this man knows knives in and out. So check out This Old Sword Blade Reviews. And again, thank you, Dave, for these uh, uh, donations to the channel. They're greatly appreciated. All right. So... Next, we've got eight great EDC folders and two fixed blade folders, two of my absolute favorite fixed blade folders for everyday carry. Um, I don't talk too much about everyday carry because uh, my everyday carry is usually something big and heavy, uh, like this Emerson, for instance. But it's getting warmer. I'm wearing lighter things like, uh, like shorts and uh, swimsuits now and again uh well that'll that'll be happening more and more but the more the lighter the the uh, garments the lighter the knife has to be otherwise you start becoming aware of it otherwise it starts banging against your leg as you walk and it just becomes a hassle and then there's nothing worse 
than removing a knife from your pocket because you don't feel like feeling it because then you don't have a knife on you. And that's not a place you ever want to be. So I was going through this week, I was going through my um, EDC knives, my, my knife box, uh, just to kind of find some of my lighter things because I'm going down to Atlanta and I know it's going to be hotter down there. It's probably pretty humid. And I wanted to see uh, what I might consider bringing. And, uh, and this was spawned on uh, a bit by Ryan Gilman, a new patron who wants us to discuss particular carry weights for particular weather. And we're going to do that. And we might make that a Thursday Night Knives uh, topic because I would love to get your input. Um, and immediately, and that's how we can do it right there on that live feed. But for our purposes right now, uh, what are some of the good light EDC knives? Uh, and we'll start with folders. And the first thing we have here is this most beautiful Dogma by Civivi. Civivi is the down, uh, is the budget line from We Knife. Uh, if you've been living in a cold, dark place and you don't know about them, and they make fantastic knives. This is such a great, great knife. And it it's a $50 knife. And you get all of the action and all of the fit and finish of a Wii knife. You just get, and all the design, frankly, all the beautiful design. Uh, it's just lesser in terms of its materials. You've got G10 here. And what is the steel here? D2. You got D2 steel, which is an awesome steel. I mean, I remember, I'm old enough to remember when D2 was the hot thing. Well, it's still fantastic. There's just some other blade steels that have eclipsed it in terms of expense and uh, supposed edge holding capability. Uh, the Dogma here is a thinly hollow ground uh, clip point. Beautiful. I love that clip point shape. I know Jim loves the handle. Every time I bring this out, he's like, hmm. That's a nice, nice looking knife there, Bob. You know, he's a he's a Carolina alum, so he sees this blue and uh, and it does something for him. Uh, this, like the uh, like the Harns I was talking about, has a great finger choil and a nicely sized blade. I would call this full size. I mean, I, I personally would call this medium at uh, three and a quarter, but uh, that's kind of like the sweet spot for EDC. It's light. It's got skeletonized steel handle, uh, steel liners in there. You can see, so it's got a full shaped, full handle, and and uh, but nice and light. Now, one thing I really like about this, this is the um, almost all of the knives I'm going to feature uh, have this. It's got G10 on both sides, and why do I care about that? Well, let's say we're talking about heat, and it's hot um, or cold actually too. Uh, the knives really, they do take on, they conduct uh, the temperature and uh, this G10 just makes for a more comfortable grip in extreme temperatures, whether hot or cold, probably to be honest, more in the cold side of things. But also if your hands are sweaty and you're using this, you've got more grip. I mean, here you've got this, uh, this really nice jigging in the G10, but the G10 on both sides will give you a nicer nicer grip when your hands are wet. So this is the first of the great EDCs to carry in uh, in warm weather. And uh, I love that knife. So next is a uh, half metal <laughs> and half G10. But this is the Pilar. This is the Pilar 3 from CRKT. CRKT and Vox have been working on these Pilar knives for quite some time now. And uh, Voxnez, uh, Jesper Voxnez, and this is their third iteration of it. Though they've they've come out with flipper versions, and um, you know there are more versions and iterations of this knife than three, but this is the third big redesign. And this is my favorite of all of them because it gives you a point, a nice point to work with, and it's on the bearings, KVT bearings, as you can see there from the logo. Actually, I'm not sure if these are KVT, but they are bearings and so smooth. It's just such a smooth knife. You can uh, spidey flick it. You can just flick it open with the thumb or the thumb stud. I mean, the thumb hole there, or you can just roll it open. This one comes in two different versions, uh, a D2 blade steel and an 8CR13. 
Mine is the 8CR13, and you can tell because it has the raw aluminum colored uh, backspacer. The D2 version has the um, gold anodized or brass colored uh, backspacer. And that's kind of how you can tell without without looking. And actually, this doesn't say the blade steel anywhere on the knife. When I first got it, I assumed it was D2 and then was swiftly corrected by one of you uh, folks out there. Great ergonomics on this knife. So you've got a full three inch blade there, but you've got a 50-50 choil as something you, you see frequently on Spydercos. And that gives you just such a great uh, grip on the knife and a full size, you know, it's a small handle, but that 50-50 choil gives you a full grip. So excellent, excellent knife. Love this knife. All right, next is... Uh, the TRM Atom. Now, this is a bit of a unicorn. Uh, so the knives in this list go from uh, very inexpensive to very expensive. This is more on the expensive side of things and hard to find uh, because Three Rivers Manufacturing um, does knives in batches and uh, makes them up in Massachusetts. And when they are when they release them, people are on them like white on rice, and they are gone in a flash. Uh, I was trying to get one. Uh, for quite some time, we even had Marianne Halpern uh, of TRM on the show. Uh, she was on episode 62, and then she was also on one of our um, uh, uh, town halls. Great lady, making great knives up there. But uh, even even like trying to like <laughs> get one out of her, they're just they're just they make them and they sell them so quickly. You, you know, they're hard to come by. So this one was a secondary market find. And then um, if you know anything about TRM, you know that they are built to swap out scales without having to disassemble the whole thing. You just remove two screws and the scales come off. So I uh, went to their site and got this really cool milled G10, uh, British Racing Green G10 with this wing pattern on it. Uh, their, their, knife, uh, their scales come either flat or in this wing pattern. Had to get the wing pattern. And uh, I've seen out there some G Carta versions of it, but I've never been able to get my hands on on a G Carta handle scale for these. But uh, love this knife, so thin, so slicey, and so just oh, just lovely to handle. It comes out super smoothly. Like the action is very, very um, washer smooth, which I think I prefer. I go back and forth, but I think I prefer washers to bearings. And uh, just smooth feel, thin, cuts like a laser. Great knife. This is 20 CV steel, by the way. TRM, made in the USA. Check out uh, episode 62 of the Knife Junkie podcast with Marianne Halpern. And uh, listen to their interesting story going from um, suppliers of titanium to the knife makers, which they still do. Uh, to makers of knives themselves, makers of some of the most coveted EDC knives out there. Next is the Hogue Mini uh, Hogue Ritter Mini RSK Mark One. RSK stands for Ritter Survival Knife. Uh, Doug Ritter, he's the guy. You know, I was talking earlier about knife rights. He is the knife rights guy, and uh, he is also the Ritter Grip guy. Um, it's no longer a Ritter grip. Uh, as Benchmade stopped doing OEM work a, a couple of years back, and uh, Doug Ritter had to find someone else to make his amazing, fantastic knife, and uh, he went to Hogue. And uh, luckily, the uh, patent on the on the um, Axis lock had uh, expired, and so everyone and their cousin now makes their version of it. And Hogue, I think, makes the best in the Abel lock. That's ambidextrous bar lock enhanced. That's what ABLE stands for. Uh, so this is the uh, just an ideal um, EDC, especially for warm weather. Uh, it's got the G10 on both sides, the beautiful, again, a beautifully milled pattern in there. And then I love this multi-layered purple, gray, black G10. Um, this, I had the larger version of this, which I actually sold uh, to hold on to this one because the large version of this is excellent. 
excellent knife. I just didn't find myself carrying it. But the small one I was carrying all the time. So I got uh, sent the large one along to a good home. <laughs> and uh, hopefully, hopefully it's in a good home. And uh, I kept this one. This was a gift from Doug Ritter. Uh, he's been on the show a number of times too. He was on episode 22, episode 110, episode 184. Um, he is a, he's a great guy, a very smart guy. And he's got experience as a pilot in all sorts of survival situations. And that's where his designs come from. The Ritter Grip or the, the Ritter uh, RSK-1 is a design that you know he he wanted to put a super steel blade on a an affordable handle and that's where this whole concept was born and uh, the hogue version of it i i frankly i've never held the benchmade version of it i'm sure the benchmade uh, ritter grip was an awesome knife but i can tell you for sure the hogue is amazing so um you can still get these. They're a KnifeWorks exclusive. So go to KnifeWorks.com and you can buy one for yourself. Amazing knife. Next is one that gets a lot of mileage around here. I'm carrying this one all the time. Uh, frequently in the waistband, uh, other times just in the pocket. Uh, but this is the concept uh, Pinkerton designed Main Street. Even though it says Little Main Street on the blade, this is just the Main Street. Uh, this is in brown micarta. It's lined on one side. Oh, wait. No, I take it back. It's lined on both sides, but you wouldn't know because it's so damn light. Um, so it's got liners. It's got this incredible, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Warncliffe blade that is just so useful. It's a 15C, 14C28N. Uh, blade steel. Oh, I'm sorry. 154 cm. Sorry, the coffee hasn't quite kicked in. 154 cm, which is my favorite blade steel overall. All the Emersons come, almost all the Emersons come with that blade steel. It, it's it's a uh, holds the edge very nicely, sharpens up nicely, polishes up nicely. It's kind of a, a great go to all arounder. And, um, and this knife has been the same thing, a great go-to all-arounder. It's nice and light, even though it's got fully lined handles. And uh, the action on bearings is awesome. Sorry, my left hand is not, uh, not, the, not the most expert at it. There's uh, Dirk Pinkerton's logo, maker's mark there. And uh, you can see there's a bunch of lint on here because it does get a lot of carry in use. It's got a sculpted pocket clip. Not deep carry, but deep enough. Leaves a little bit for you to grab there. Just uh, and and one thing I like about this is that it's light but also full sized. If you look at the blade, it's about it's a nearly three and a half. It's like three point four inch blade, uh, especially if you look at the cutting edge, which comes back behind the front of the handle just a little bit. Something I always like, and the ergonomics are fantastic. Just a neutral handle, warm because of that uh, micarta and quite grippy because of that micarta so stays in the hand it's a great work knife so uh, the main street and i have no doubt that the actual little main street uh, which this is not that has a sub three inch blade but uh, nearly three inch blade i have no doubt that's an awesome knife too concept concept sorry uh, is really knocking it out of the park now those are graduates from kaiser knife who uh who head up concept so they have that pedigree they know what they're doing next is is an expensive and exclusive knife uh this uh comes to me not not this was a gift from the company uh but i love it it is the rock wall by tactile knife tactile knife is the knife company born out of tactile turn uh pen company and man do they know machining do they know tolerances Yes, they do. Uh, this knife is beautifully textured, full titanium, but a titanium liner lock, not something you see too often. Excellent action on bearings. And the real highlight of this, though, uh, I got to say, I love this, the milling and the, the tactile nature and the, and the look of the handle and the clip, but the blade is just amazing. This one is in... Um, 
Uh, this is CTS XHP. I think they're going to be uh, making them in 20 CV in the future. I love XHP steel. I have no problem with this, but this blade shape is just magnificent. It's got the point right in the right place. It is a drop point, and uh, that swedge really adds in penetration, and it's just super sharp. These guys know what they're doing. They really came out of the gate strong, strongly. Uh, this is their first one, but I know that they're working on slip joints and they have a couple of other knives in the works. But if you know anything about this knife company, you know that there's a quite a waiting list. My father is on it, uh, which I think is cool. My, after after seeing uh, the interview with Michael Martin on episode, uh, what was it one, one, uh, 216? <laughs> Thank you, Jim. After seeing uh, the interview with uh, Matthew, <laughs> Michael Miller from Tactile Knife. You know that the uh, wait list for this knife is quite long, and uh, but my dad liked the cut of their jib, liked the look of this knife, and uh, liked that they're proudly made in Texas, um, all made in their shop except for the stop pins, and uh, those come from another Texas company, so proudly Texas made, and uh, he got on that waiting list. And so should you. If you like the design of this, know that it is a fantastic knife uh, with incredible tolerances and fit and finish and just a classy, classy knife. And when they were designing this, they wanted it to fit within the footprint of a stick of gum, you know, like the, the old style Wrigley's gum. This would slide right into that package. So nice, just just under three inch blade. It's like 2.9 inches and a fantastic, fantastic knife. Um, I'm grateful to them for giving it to me. And, and uh, well, it's one that's going to stay in the collection forever because it's super awesome. This one, this next one is also uh, a great knife. Another American made knife. This is made by, this is an American blade company, um, American Blade Works. Um, model one mark five model one version five sorry it's too much to remember american blade works model one version five and uh, this is matthew martin michael martin i'm sorry geez man i'm so all these michaels and matthews and um he makes these on his own in his own shop and just my god they're amazing knives this is uh, on bearings. This is oh, S35VN, fully flat ground. This is an excellent all-around EDC knife. Interesting aspect to this in the uh, finger choil here. It's nicely chamfered and rounded, so you get an incredible forward grip if you need to, but it loses no cutting edge by having that choil there. Just the way it's designed and placed uh, is perfect for a forward grip, but with a full length cutting edge there. And uh, that also has to do with the placement of the, the flipper tab. He goes through iteration after iteration. I believe he's on version six of this now, which may be the final version. I think he, he may have gotten it to where exactly where he likes it. And he takes customer feedback and just runs with it. He's a, he's a nimble American blade works is a really nimble company and he can just, change things in the machining, change things in, in the design uh, with feedback in a quick way and uh, really perfect the knife and zero in on its perfect version of itself. If you look at it, it's got a really nice, nice sort of contoured handle there, beautifully milled G10. And in keeping with that theme, the G10 on both sides really adds to the grip and really adds to um, the, you know, the way the material takes on the temperature. So if you leave this in your car, which you shouldn't do, but if you left this in your car on a hot summer day and you came out and had to use it, it wouldn't hurt to hold it in your hand because you have the G10 on both sides and, um, and uh, you'd have a nice grip too in your sweaty paws. So this American Blade Works Model 1 version 5 or any version I've had, uh, I've held two other versions of this knife. They're all awesome and all just a little bit different because each time, each iteration, he makes an improvement. Um, I don't uh, I don't know what he would want to improve on this one because everything about it is excellent, but I do have it on Goodword that the six is even better. So there you have it. <laughs> 
awesome knife. Next one is known for its lightness. Yes, that's a Benchmade right there. The Benchmade bug out. It's a classic at this point. You know, everyone knows the Benchmade bug out, but it is one of my favorite all arounders. I carry this year round, uh, oftentimes in the waistband. Uh, it, this one has the um, has the snaggle tooth MF pocket deployer, uh, so you can wave it out of your pocket. Uh, I like that feature personally. Um, this one also has Allen Putnam micarta scales on it. Um, the original comes with the plastic handles that are they're fine. They're not going anywhere. I mean, you can bend them and 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 make them. Uh, you can squeeze them in, but it's a resilient plastic. I just like my card and had to get that on there. So this is obviously, this is a great all arounder, uh, but excellent for gym shorts or for swimsuits or whatever, you know, your lightest wear, even, even like summer weight suits, pants and that kind of thing. It's so damn light, but so capable uh, with this beautiful uh, S30 V blade drop point blade. And, now it comes in so many different variations and exclusives. You can get all sorts of different handle materials uh, from the company and also exclusive with different purveyors, different blades, deals, and such. This is just kind of your off-the-shelf um, off the shelf Benchmade bug out with some of my own aftermarket additions. A great, great EDC knife and highly recommended. It's it's definitely worth as you know some people are not huge Benchmade fans because they've had some issues here and there with fit and finish. This one is so well worth it. Please uh, please check out a Benchmade bug out. Uh, the last two knives in this list of amazing EDC, uh, especially for uh, summer weight clothing, is a Tops knife. You might not think of Tops when you think of this category, but this. This knife is awesome. This is a fixed blade, the Tops FDX 66. Comes in this beautiful, beautiful uh, slip um, sort of sheath that you can wear on your belt in Scout or in traditional North to South here, or you can carry it the way I carry it, which is just dropped in the pocket. And then what do you have here when you pull it out? You have a Tanto blade. Now I used to have some um, paracord on the handle, which, you know, all these slots and grooves here really lend itself to wrapping. Uh, and I like it, but I wanted it as thin as possible, especially uh, with the onset of summer. So I took the cord wrapping off. Maybe in the wintertime, I'll put it back on. But you get this extremely sharp um, tanto blade, and, and you get more cutting edge than you might think because of this angle here. Um, you know, it, it's more than the sum of its parts, if you will. Um, I think, let's see, you get, yeah, you get a full three inch, full, yeah, full three inch cutting edge on a two and a half inch blade because of this, that angle there. So this is a really, really great knife um, for utility, but also in a pinch, this is a great thing to have on you for self-defense because it's got this very, very sure grip with this, with this almost, you know, more than half a circle uh, choil there and this short handle, which really butts up nicely into the palm here. If you needed to thrust it for whatever reason, you know, get off me. If you had to thrust it, this right here works great. Almost like a push dagger in that it backs up into your palm and it's not going anywhere. And your fingers are definitely not slipping up onto that blade. So a great, great utility fixed blade. Um, I could see someone working in a warehouse using this, carrying this. Um, you can also kind of do stuff with your hands uh, while having this in your hand. You know, oh, I'm going to do something here, sign a paper, and then whoosh, open up a box. Uh, this thing would work great for that. But also just to have on you as a last ditch, uh, you know, deterrent, you know, get off of me kind of thing. Great knife, great knife. And just this beautiful full grain leather sheath slip thing is... Uh, is amazing. Tops knife, uh, tops knives, FDX 66. The one thing I don't like about that, I'm not too fond of the, uh, of the coloration, but psh, you know, big deal, big deal. If you really don't, if you really care, you could change that. So last, this is an expensive one and, uh, and an exclusive one, but I love it so much. 
And I think, man, if he comes up with a way to make this a production knife, I think he should. This is the Kramer Custom Knives uh, Voodoo in a great, great sheath uh, that carries really excellently in the waistband. Um, but here's the knife, the Voodoo. It's a recent acquisition. Very, very nice and thin. Uh, Eric Kramer, I spoke to him. He's going to be on episode 220. So definitely check it out. Uh, this is, I opted for double edge. Uh, you don't have to get double edge. As a matter of fact, I think it's, uh, that's a special request. But this is a, an extremely thin and capable knife. Very thin. It rides right next to the body in that excellent thin sheath. And it, you really, you forget it's there and it gives you a full size grip. See that? I even have some coming out the bottom. And uh, with this Persian shape, I mean, to me, it looks like a clip point, but I have it on his word. It was um, inspired by, a, by Persian knives. Um, with that thumb swale there, you have a perfect, perfect grip. And then, of course, with the reverse uh, edge sharpened, you have an excellent tactical knife too, or self-defense knife. This has, since I've gotten it, I've been carrying it constantly, like literally constantly. Uh, I've even carried it at work in such a fashion that if you really cared to see it, you could, and it just blends in. It's so thin and so light and um, it's kind of unobtrusive that it just it's so easy to carry. This is a pajama knife to me. This is an all day knife to me. This has truly been an EDC. I use the term EDC just to mean easy to carry sometimes, but this transcends that. This is one I, I, I've been carrying every day for the, for the weeks I've had it now. And um, not for nothing, but uh, Eric Kramer can really, really grind a knife. I mean, this is super thin 154 CM and he hollow grinds it down to, you know, couple of atoms thick there. Look at that. So an incredible knife and a, a true EDC. Maybe not the easiest to get, but uh, I really hope that he um, makes that a production knife somehow because man, it would be, it would be a very popular, popular choice. I think I've gone long enough. Jeez. Thanks for sticking with me. If you've done so this long, thank you, Jim, for sticking with me. <laughs> uh, so these are my uh, 10 really favorite EDC knives for warm weather this summer. And um, we're going to do, we're going to do a deeper dive into specific weights and specific knives for year round. Uh, I think we will do that on a, on a Thursday night knives or two. Check us out Thursday night knives tomorrow night, right here on uh, YouTube. That's 10 PM Eastern standard time live. We usually go about two hours. So join us really go to the knife junkie.com slash join and join us. You'll be happy you did. Also, check us out on Patreon. If you like the show and you want to help support us, there are various uh, tiers of support. You don't uh, you, you don't have to break the bank to help support us here at The Knife Junkie. Or another great way to support us is to share our videos, like, comment, and subscribe. So for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying look for some exclusive Blade content coming up this week. And uh, in the meantime, Definitely don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast